Welcome back to our Soul Winning Lessons. As we pick up in number 18 of our topic, and we're not going to review because you can go back and get the video or the audio files off YouTube or SoundCloud. And number 18, when we're discussing public ministry, soul winning, the yeas, the nays, the do's, and the don'ts. Where did Cain get his wife? That's not a question for soul winning. And that kind of question is loaded because it gets you away from the main subject. Now we are there to witness, we are there for the gospel, we're not there for a game show with questions. And we need to realize and we need to look at people because we can't just, okay, everybody that comes up to your word can't get his way. We can't say, well, they're they're just trying to avoid, they're just trying to take up time because you know, maybe someone is asking a serious question. So when the questions come, make a note of it. Discuss later if you have time, but you got to get back to the witnessing issue. Now, the main thing of soul winning and public ministry is going out and presenting the gospel. Where Cain got his wife, how many animals were on the ark, are not gospel related. And then... We've got to avoid having them to ask such questions. And when you present yourself with a public Bible that's been marked, and they look in their Bible and say, oh, what's that marked for? Now, see, it's proper to mark the Bible. Jeremiah says, who has marked the word? I am a Bible marker. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm a Bible marker. But that's not the Bible I will bring in, and still, my public ministry Bible has marks in it. And when you're dealing with people and Satan who does not want people to get saved, where he will steal the seed, he'll choke the seed, he'll have the seed grow up and get full sun and no water, marking the Bible will go, hey, what's that for? What's that about? And notes. And it may take you away from the true meaning of the gospel in the visit. And if in the end the question is re asked, briefly answer it. But again, bring it back to the gospel in closing. Do not close, do not let a question overcome the gospel. Now, if you're dealing with somebody who's saved and you're growing them in the Lord, okay. Now, number 19. Note taking. In the back or front of your Bible. Now, I do not have all the answers. I don't. And there are things right now I want to mark in my public Bible, my ministry Bible. I want to mark in the back of the Bible. Or I use the concordance in it as I look at H E L L K. And I try to do it such a way that they don't realize what I'm doing. But if you're going to mark out the Romans Road in your Bible, do it in pencil the lightest that you can make it, the smallest that you can make it, that they will not. Oh, okay, I see what you're doing. You're just following this plan. You you know, you do this with everybody, and that's not the case. Satan will, will use anything he can to try to get them not to hear the gospel, to get them off on, on a bunny trail themselves. And we we got to cover up those trails. We got to do right. We got to avoid those questions. Now, preparation, number 20. And if you're young and a newborn babe in Christ, or you're old and mature in Christ, you got to know your King James Bible. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm holding my hand the way it is. It's, it's been sore and it's, it seems to be the only comfortable way my arm would be, so I apologize. 
you got to start knowing the Bible, and you've got to keep knowing your Bible. In 2 Timothy, Second Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And again, if you're going to mark your Bible, so okay, I'm, a, I'm coming up to Jehovah Witnesses. What good verses are for Jehovah Witnesses? Write it in the back of your Bible. On the right-hand column. If it's in the front of your Bible. Write it on the left hand column, you know, those blank pages if you've got any in your Bible. So you can go back here and I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but if you're the you can't see my Bible. Put my put this down a little bit. Alright, you see I've got to the back page. If I put it on the left hand column, now see I can look, okay, there's what I want. I want Second Timothy two fifteen. Just kinda of looking. Alright, next verse I want uh this first Timothy five three and see and you can kind of do it hide yourself from doing it learning i'll see like back way it goes make all your notes where you can easily access them in your bible and never ever be ashamed to say i don't know and you're going to come across here in Daytona Beach, Florida, where I am. I'm not going to bother making notes about Mormons because I really have not met no Mormons. I like to deal with Catholics, so notes about Catholics. Primary the religion down here is Jehovah Witness. Well, those notes would be the notes I put in the, in the Bible or that particular place. Okay, I know where that I would write for me. I would go over into John chapter 10, verse 30. It says, it says, I and the Father are one, and I'd make some notes there. I'd go over there where Thomas says, my Lord, my God, i make notes there. But we ought to know the Bible, but we're not going to know all the Bible. And in a public Bible ministry, our notes are not going. Our full notes are not going to be. Now, I'll tell you what. I, another thing I run into that is a problem. Okay. There's another thing that I run into problem. I got used to my Schofield Bible. That's not wrong. Schofield is my preaching. It's my study Bible. It's my family study Bible. Now I've gotten to the point in in the ministry of the Bible. All right, I know it's on the right hand page on the second column. I know it's over here in the left hand page, right near the middle. But when I get into my public ministry Bible, and I have another Bible I use for, for strictly ministry, it's not the same place where the Schofield book notes and scripture is. So we got to really get away from. That part of the scriptures that, oh, and my Bible at home, it's there. And B, be ready to not know everything. We do not know the whole Bible. And if you are put to the works by a sinner, and you are found not knowing. Study to show thyself approved, un, un, approved by God. Go home and study where you lack. And grow thereby. If somebody of a particular religion of no religion at all. And they nail you to the spot. And they put you down. And they, and they run off mocking and wonderful and great. How wonderful they got the man of God. Go home and find where you're wrong. And that's the best way. That's the ways where I found out where I needed to grow. Where I lost. And the person I was dealing with won. And I went home and studied it. And a daily reading and daily prayer life in the Bible. Let's 
C. Have KJV, King James Bible, 1611 Bible Gospel Tracks. Chick Tracks, Fellowship Track League. Uh, can't think of his name now. There's a man that we have. I got his stuff over here somewhere. I got a man, James L. Milton. Uh, you can write. To BibleBaptistPublications.org. He's got wonderful books. He's got wonderful tracks. He's got wonderful information. Now check your tracks. There is a memories for you and other tracks that they have them in New King James and IVs. Make sure your tracks are chick tracks. Make sure your tracks are fellowship track. Make sure your tracks are by James Milton. But most important, make sure your tracks are King James tracks. And read the tracks yourself. There are a wide range of people, religions, and subjects. And reading the tracks and all of them will get you used to people. It will get you used to religion. And it will get you in all kinds of subjects. And it's of value to read those tracts because they come out of the Bible. And read them with your Bible. And read your Bible with the tracts. Know the tracts to who you are handing them to. Don't hand a child a tract on bikers. Don't hand a, a child a tract on STDs. You're not going to hand, uh, hand a Jehovah Witness a tract on Roman Catholic. Now, I, I had somebody who was involved with the tract ministry and all that. And he just hand out tracts, you know, without even looking at what the tract was. Like, no, 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 no. He was handing out tracks that were for Christians that are worldly to lost people. Know the track and know the subject. Memorize Bible verses. Next topic. Number four. Memorize. 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 Repetition. Since most tract themes are the gospel, and they're about witnessing the gospel, use the scripture that are in the gospel tracts to get to know. The best well-known scripture, what scriptures should I know when I go out witnessing to people? Gospel tracts are for witnessing for, to people. Use the scriptures that are in those gospel tracts and know where they are. Now, let me tell you three ways to know scripture. Number one, and all three can be applied. Know it vocally. You can say book, chapter, and the verse. Excellent. And since you have a King James Bible with you, know where to find it in the Bible. You may not be able to quote it, but can you open the Bible and show it to them? And number three, you may know the verse, but you may not know where it is. There are verses that I quote. I, I, I may know what book it is, maybe not the chapter or verse, but memorize the scriptures. Because you don't know how long you're going to have when you're dealing with somebody. You might be able to just quote, you know, with the heart man believes on the righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. You may not know it. That might be the only thing you'll be able to get to them. But you know that scripture. And if you're dealing with somebody and say, okay, let me show you here in Romans chapter 10. It says, verse 9, If thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. There, there's another. you got to know the scriptures. And the best way for witnessing and dealing with people with scriptures is to read those gospel tracts and the scriptures they use 
Now start off with the plain, simple gospel first. You're dealing with people who are lost. And as you get to know those, you know, then start reading Roman Catholic scripture. And then go and be able to find in Matthew where it says, Call no man your father. Advanced religious themes. Use the tracks. Have multiple tracks with you. You don't need 26 copies each track. Have a pile of tracks and have someone there, Roman Catholic, have someone there, Jehovah Witness, have someone in there who, you know, who's strong and biker type, trucker type. Have children's tracks. Have teenage tracks. That you might be able to use them. The worst track you can have is the track that you don't have. Many a times throughout my being saved, the most difficult time is I want to give a gospel track and I go in my pocket and I don't have a gospel track. And then most, if not all, the scripture found in gospel track will be the most helpful to you if you memorize it. I mean, gospel tracts are the very great of your Bible memorization to move on. To memorize the Bible verses too. Know it completely. Bible chapter verse by oralness. You can say it. Romans 10, 9. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Know it in, in the Bible. Acts chapter 10. I can't quote Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Acts 10. 28. I mean that. Oh, I have a problem. Acts 10. See, I just ran into a problem. Acts 10, 28. Oh, look at that. See? I do wrong. Oh, that's interesting. Acts chapter 10. See? Oh, see that? Look at that. I... I, I make boo-boos. Look at that. And you'll see the problem is... I can search the scriptures, but I know where it is in my ministry Bible. But I don't know where it is. Oh, yeah. well, look at that. Caught me unprepared. See? <laughs> unprepared. Lord God, forgive me. Acts 20. Maybe Acts 20. Yep. 20. Acts 20, 28. All right, here it is. Acts 20, 28. I, I was going to say I know the book, the chapter, and number, but uh, I guess I don't. But Acts 20, 28. Which he has purchased with his own blood, God, the Holy Ghost. And I will use that verse against the Jehovah Witnesses. I know where it is in my... In my public ministry Bible. See? That's where I got the Bible's confused. Now, I can't quote that verse, and I can't find that verse. But there it is. And if you can have your Bible and be able to open to it, like I just couldn't, there it is. And you'll get caught up. You'll get, you know, we're not perfect. And you just kind of like laugh it off. You get, if I was dealing with somebody, I you know, yeah, look, yeah, I really don't like Bible, don't I? Uh, and go searching for it again, you know. But another note of your Bible is you know what book it is in the chapter, Revelation 19. I, I don't know the verses. I don't know what the I, my jury quote the verses, and they say, is he going to know it this time? Revelation 19. 
When I get to Revelation 19, oh, okay, verse 11 to 16, the second coming of Jesus Christ. Then you can know it by the book. But in any case of witnessing, you may or may not have the opportunity to use an open Bible. Well, let me show you that I ain't got the time. And now you've got it. He's walking away. And you've got to come up with a, a scripture to send him away with. And we don't want to misquote the scripture because he may go home and check it. This devil may say, put that verse in his heart. Uh, hey, here's a Bible. Check what he said. And it's best if you can quote the verse. It is better you can show them the Bible. In the Bible. It is most if you can quote the verse, then show them in the Bible. Now that's going to give you character. That's going to be, oh, that's exactly what you said. Okay. And that's going to show them that you do have some knowledge and you are worthy of showing them what the Bible has to say. Now I will, again, I'll deal with, with Jehovah Witnesses. And Thomas said, my Lord, my God, which is in the Bible. All right. Look at it. Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Okay, I know it's in John. I know it's toward the end of John. So I'll come through here. Resurrection. Mary, my, okay, ain't that. Over here. Okay. Now see, I knew it's in John. I knew it was toward the end of John. And it says in verse 28, my Lord, my God. And I'll show a Jehovah Witness that's in the Bible. What can you tell me about that? And they can't tell you nothing. You have no knowledge of the Bible. Now, I couldn't quote for you. I could not tell you John 20, verse 28. But I could tell you if I'm going to have the ability to open the Bible or the ability to quote the Bible, is I'll walk up right to Jehovah Witnesses and put right in their face, Thomas said, my Lord, my God. We'll find it. Okay. It's in the towards of John. It's not at the end of John. It's not the very end of John. It's after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And from that point, I can find it. It's much better to say it's in there. Which in some cases with quote in the scripture, I had to say that. It's in the Bible. <laughs> That's not really a good thing to have. Not a good thing to point to. But you got to study. You got to memorize. You got to. But we don't know the whole Bible. And yet, if we feed the Holy Spirit that dwells with us, it is remarkable when you walk away from a conversation with someone saved or what, and when the Holy Spirit has used you, and He has blessed you, from your studying, you will realize that you will know Scripture through the Holy Spirit that you did not even know you knew. And if you understood what I just said, you are a soul winner. You have been used by God. If you do not know what I said, you need to get active. You need to get studying. You need to get praying. So you can see what the Holy Spirit can do and what joy that comes. Now, number 21, are they heaven bound? Question of a major event of so winning. Are they going to heaven? Do they believe in a heaven? And the question most remarkably put forth, standard, if you were to die tonight, or if you were to die now, if you were to die this afternoon, do you know for a surety you would go into heaven? Now they say no. And they're willing to learn. You've got opportunity. But, but, let's, we're getting questions. We're unquestioned. And they say, yo, yes, I know how I know I'm going to heaven. Now you've got to ask you another question. How do you know you're going to heaven? You ask them if they were to die, are they going to heaven? And if they say yes, you're posing the question. Take control. Keep that conversation gospel centered. 
Now to them. Well, how do you, how do you, or what way are you going to heaven? You're, you're going to heaven, yes? Well, that's great, wonderful. Now tell me how you're going. Now there'll be one of two answers from that one. There were one or two answers. If you were to die, are you going to heaven? Answers yes or no. Yes. How are you going to heaven? There's there's two answers. Number one, by Jesus Christ and the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried and arose again according to the scriptures. I am going to heaven by the merit, by the finished work, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to heaven. That's the correct answer. Well, how do you know you're going to heaven? I'm a good person. I go to church. I'm not bad as anybody else. I keep the commandments. I let my light shine. Those are wrong answers. If Christ saved them and they're going to heaven on Jesus Christ, you can have a little bit of fellowship, great time together. But if they answer anything but Jesus Christ, Now you got work. If they are if they answer, they are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, minus any work of their own self, they are saved. Glorify God the Son. Glory to God in height. There's a new there was a name written down in heaven. And it was that person you're dealing with. But if they answer other than, if they give any other answer that is not, is not Jesus Christ. Whatever answer they give that is not Jesus Christ is not the finished work of Jesus Christ. Now the soul winning begins. And now we're going to get into dealing with lost people. And the most functional question you can get when you're dealing with somebody in the public. Do you know when you're going to die that you will go to heaven? And if that answer is Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. They are saved. They are saved. But if I'm good, church, whatever, if that answer is not Jesus Christ, and we have time to deal with them and time to be with them, We have to leave them with the idea that they are not going to go to heaven because they have not given the right answer. And we've got to get them out of the belief that I am good is going to get them saved. I am a church member is going to get them saved. I whatever. And we're now going to go into the soul winning of dealing with lost people on how to be saved and to counteract what they believe being saved is. So we're going to pick up next time from the question is, how do you know you're going to heaven? I go to church, I was baptized, I'm good, my grandpa told me, uh, I walked old ladies across the street, I keep the Ten Commandments, I let my light and whatever answer they give outside the, the question where the answer lies in Jesus Christ we're going to pick up where they don't give the proper answer and that question about if you were to die where are you going to go is a very important question because the answer they give will be okay I need to let you go let's have some prayer and we'll have some fellowship and time in heaven 
But we need to stop and we need to look at the Bible. Because you don't think you you don't know where you're going. You think you're going, but you're not. And we'll pick it up next time, Lord willing.